Hello and welcome to the first of a series of interviews with innovators in the media industry. Joining me today is George Berridge from the me social media team at The Sun, also a graduate of the journalism programme here at the University of Winchester. George, uh, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Uh, now, in a nutshell, can you tell us what's different about social media journalism compared to uh, journalism as we've known it hitherto? I suppose the main difference is, uh, whereas previously uh, journalists would work uh, to print deadlines and work uh, filing copy throughout the day before the uh, paper goes to bed, uh, now social media journalists um, and journalists in general are uh, required to copy breaking stories and put them out very, very quickly. Um, there's an enormous race now um, to get news out first, while still maintaining the accuracy um, and all the good qualities about from the old guard of journalism uh, that existed well, previously. I want to come back to you about accuracy in a minute, because that's, sure. that's, that's an interesting point on social media. But it's always been quite a competitive industry. I mean, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, in particular that's in right. Fleet Street, where you are. So how come social media is any different to that? Uh, the difference now is that, uh, whereas previously uh, we worked over sort of a difference of hours over who got a story, um, now the difference can be uh, a matter of you know, a minute. Um, with big celebrity deaths, for example, uh, the deaths of people sort of in high status, um, uh, the coverage of that can now vary between sort of a minute and two minutes. If you cover it two minutes after, say, the first person breaks the story, then you can be deemed to have sort of lost the story, really. Um, and the first person will take coverage of it almost entirely. Yeah, I've heard the, the phrase winner takes all, that if, even a few seconds after. In the old days, you could have followed up with a different angle and so on if you didn't get the story absolutely first. But winner takes all. But that could also mean, couldn't it, if you get that wrong, <laughs> not, only, not only are the great stakes to be won here, but you could lose your uh, credibility instantly. That's absolutely right. So uh, one of the main issues with uh, social media is that you're accountable for everything that you write. Um, even more so perhaps than you would be in print. Um, that is to say, if uh, in social media, if we were to um, perhaps get a wrong detail, I would say the age of someone who had died, um, we'd be instantly held accountable to that. And people who feel very passionately about certain issues, obviously, um, are keen to see that we report things right and report things accurately and fairly. Um, so we're held accountable by all these people, um, which is important and it's good for journalism. Um, that we are held to the same high standards that people would expect from print. But, but to go a bit technical on you now, for, for, for some of our viewers who know a bit about media law, I mean, court reporting must be an absolute nightmare because what can be said, what can't be said, what stage a case is at, I mean, it varies by the hour, varies by the minute. So the, the, the chances of making a mistake on court reporting must be enormous. Yes, so the, obviously with uh, reporting around legal issues, it's very important that uh, as a social media journalist, uh, sort of up to date with uh, current media law as it stands and be following cases very, very carefully. So judges, as you know, will often put in uh, reporting restrictions on uh, what can and what can't be reported. Um, we're seeing now that uh, judge, more and more judges are allowing, uh, allowing journalists to report via Twitter from courtrooms, which previously was unheard of because we weren't allowed reporting devices, uh, recording devices in courtrooms. Um, so now it's very, very important that when we're publishing via social media, we're fully up to date on uh, what law is in act when we're covering a case. So, for example, we've got the uh, Adam Johnson case, which has just recently finished. Um, it was very important when covering that to be fully aware of um, what laws were in place regarding the coverage of uh, the victim. And there was a lot of talk amongst journalists about the innovation of reporting court on Twitter from the public gallery. I mean, what sort of audience reaction do you get to that? Has it worked? Do, 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 the, do the punters uh, uh, like that? Do, do you get yes. big views for that kind yes, of thing? Yes, there's, um, there's an enormous appetite um, in the public among uh, court cases, especially uh, obviously we've had recently um, issues like uh, Utrecht has been uh, ongoing. Um, and so we have people who have an enormous thirst for this. Um, but so while it's uh, important to give people sort of what they want, it's also important that we're still maintaining absolute accuracy over all these issues. We have to be held to the same account that print journalism would be. Um, so in that way, that social media journalism is very, very tense sometimes when reporting court cases, because the, uh, the need, the necessity to be right and be perfect with, our, with regards to a law is absolute. That's great. Now, now going back to the competitive Yes. Theme. I mean, it's one of the great attractions of journalism. It's a great motivator. You want to win, you want to be first, you want to get the big audiences. Now, The Sun, 
online where, where you are yes. and began behind a paywall, which couldn't have helped too much. Now, I don't want you to divulge any trade secrets sure. or hard information. We wouldn't expect to do that. But presumably you've changed that now. And what, what effect has ha that had when you just hang the sun out there on the Internet for anyone uh, to see, as it were, for free? Yes. Um, so one of the interesting things about that is, uh, of course, the issue of how you sell a story now online. Um, previously, when we were paywalled, we had to work very, very hard to sell stories because not only were we selling the story as a, as a whole, uh, we were selling a sort of a subscription bundle to the website. Um, so you not only have to be able to sell that one story, but you have to give them re your audience reason to think, right, I want to um, read more and more of this. It was found through trial and error. I mean, it was an experiment that um, it was worth trying, but it didn't work in the end. Um, uh, so they've decided to take down the paywall model now. We're now free for all. So we're on the competitive market, mm. the free market, if you will. Um, mm. And we're competing with everyone else. I, I love the trial and error idea because, of course, the glory of uh, digital journalism is that you can change quickly. If something's not working, you, you can get rid of it. That's so, right. So, I mean, and I, whatever I think people are going to be interested in, generally speaking, they aren't. And whatever I'm not interested in, they seem to be massively interested in it. So, I mean, ha have you got any good stories about that? Are there things that have been great surprises that have worked and got an audience? Yes, I mean, there's issues. Um, there's a common misconception, I think, among the public over what people want now. And it, it changes very, very quickly in uh, social media journalism. There was a period uh, not long after BuzzFeed started becoming big news. So BuzzFeed now incredibly important in the media scene um, and are changing very, very rapidly. There was a, uh, they got stuck with the, uh, the motto that they were sort of only around cats and this sort of... You clickbait. Know, clickbait, novelty nonsense I mean, is, is, is what is people By the way, it. Is, that, is that a term of abuse, clickbait? Uh, in know, a sense. Would you ever say that's only clickbait, that's not a proper story? Um, I don't buy into that so much, only because I believe that now in, in the age of the web, we are, it's important that we're selling every story. If you're not selling a story, then what are you doing with it? Um, so to an extent, everything that goes out on social media is clickbait. Um, there are, the only dish issue is when you are misleading uh, people over uh, what the, st the real story is, which can be deemed as uh, clickbait in the derogatory sense. Mm. I love the, the, the Sun social media and its Twitter account, but it is extremely tabloid, isn't it? I mean, it yes. does seem to be driving much more towards a, an American sort of if it bleeds, it leads sort of thing of yeah. quite horrific crime stories mixed with cute animal stories and all the rest of it. Not much analysis there, not much reflection. So are we, uh, would you say that the social media version of the tabloids are like intensified um, I tabloids think there is or something? A, you're, you're quite right in one element. Um, I think the, the need is to amplify the sun sort of brand. Um, obviously we're on a mass market now, we're competing with lots of other people. And you will find that all across social media, newspapers, even in a, uh, the normally would take a very conservative view in print will uh, online will be quite uh, loud about something and will be slightly more tabloid. We'll see even papers uh, like the Independent, uh, you know, rest in peace. We'll see them uh, being much more tabloid around their okay. stories. Um, the issue is, of course, that we're, everyone everyone's competing over the same story. The issue is to be sort of the loudest and the brashest in the room, and that is often what gets the clicks. Quick, can I ask you how the Sun social media fits into the? So, uh, social media environment. I mean, there, there must be more opportunities to link it up with Facebook and so forth. Where are you getting your traffic from? Where have they been just before they, they come and look at the sun? If you can tell me that, it's not a trade secret. Sure, I mean, it's, uh, it's no great secret that most of the traffic uh, via most news publishers now comes via Facebook. Um, we see an enormous percentage of our uh, social traffic come via Facebook. Twitter, while there's a lot of, uh, it makes, it's making a lot of headlines at the moment with its uh, stock prices falling and the future of Twitter, how it's going to look in sort of a few years' time, uh, is interesting. Actually, most publishers are far more concerned with Facebook. Uh, we're far more interested in what Facebook does because Facebook manipulates the algorithm that it uses to show people things on their timeline. Um, and we can find that when they tweak something like that, we can be instantly, uh, our traffic can rise or fall very, very quickly because it determines what people see. Um, so we're constantly manoeuvring around, um, around that. Um, so it's constantly sort of beckoning to Facebook's call at the moment. Fascinating. So, so, so Facebook is really a, a strong media power, isn't it? Yes, I mean, that's correct. Is it more powerful than the Sun? In um, terms of what, what people are reading I mean, and thinking different. about? Um, it's more a platform, I think, is the issue. Um, so everyone has sort of... Facebook like the idea that publishers have an equal chance on. Uh, Facebook and that's a competitive market in its own brand. Um, what actually happens is Facebook are fairly closed off in what they tell people about how they change things. They're much more interested in changing things for people who use it on a daily basis for the uh, consumer rather than publishers. 
Um, they don't tell publishers an enormous amount about how they change the way their system works. So it's often the uh, publishers are following Facebook in terms of what they're doing and what, how Facebook believes, uh, what audiences believe to be valuable. Um, so to an extent, yes, Facebook is incredibly powerful and we are uh, constantly chasing after what they want, um, which is difficult in one sense. Um, but uh, yes, very important at the moment. Well, one thing that's said in, in, um, in these circles about, about the broadsheets online is that a lot of people share the articles but don't actually read them, they don't, they don't click through. Yes. That's a phenomena. Do you notice that with your own work? Or? Yes, absolutely. So, um, and you'll find this everywhere. So there was quite a recent, um, after the horrific attacks in Paris, um, yes. around the same time there was also an awful attack in Lebanon. Um, there was a lot of debate over whether the media, a lot of people on Facebook sharing articles and sharing posts saying the media aren't covering Lebanon in the same way they're cov covering Paris. Is this unfair? Now it's simply not true to say that the media weren't covering Lebanon. The issue is what people are sharing and what people are interested in on social media. So people like to share articles about an attack in Lebanon to make sure they seem worldly and they seem that they're involved in current affairs. But actually, and the same result is through from every publisher, not just The Sun, that people are sharing these articles, but actually they're not clicking through to them and they're not reading them um, because they like to seem informed. But actually, when it comes to it, an attack like Paris, much close to home, and it resonates with them much, much deeper. And so you'll find enormous stories on uh, a story like Paris, but you simply won't find them in world affairs stories because people aren't that interested in them. People claim to be, but they're just not. And it's a sad fact of our social media. That's fascinating. Do you get the same kind of stratification that's broadsheet to broadsheet on, online? I mean, do your viewers uh, and users move between broadsheets and the sun and all over the place? Or, or is it strictly that su yeah. sun users will also be on the Daily Star and uh, the, the celeb celebrity pages of the Daily Mail? I say it's very interesting. It's looking at how... Uh, what our audience is interested in is, again, an, an issue of trial and improvement. So we're constantly looking at what stories our readers are interested in, what they're sharing and what they're clicking through to. Um, we often find this crossover with what uh, broadsheets are publishing. And it, and it seems more now, more now, so, eh, now so than ever that uh, broadsheets like The Telegraph, for example, are publishing lots more tabloidy stories mm. in order to compete with uh, uh, tabloids on social media, which is very interesting. Fascinating. Now, finally, because time's against us. Of course. Um, as, as ever, the, um, the future of this phenomenon, how, how, how do you see that developing? You've, you're there at the uh, cutting edge, really. You've been a couple of years now sure. in that media team at The Sun, quite a, a small but growing team, and, and the status of the uh, social media within The Sun must be rising Yes, it's, it's relative a, to the paper. Yes, it's a very, very interesting time to be uh, working in social media uh, in newsrooms at the moment, especially within print newsrooms. Uh, we it used to be a bit of an adjunct. We'd, 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 we'd fill up the newspaper. Oh, and by yeah. the way, uh, we kind of advertise exactly. the content on, on, and this is on how, this newfangled um, internet thing. Yes, and that's how most <coughs> publishers viewed uh, social media until, say, the last five years. Um, where social media was always an afterthought. It was only in its very, very early stages. And now we're finding lots of publishers are publishing on social media first. Uh, with the birth of things like, so Facebook have released their instant articles, Twitter are using Twitter moments. Um, so we find that publishers are now racing to be first out on social media before they've even thought about print. Um, so it's a fascinating time to be in newsrooms. We know that print sales generally are in decline, um, so there's competition there in order to be. When print eventually dies, if, it, you know, if print dies completely, then we'll be on a totally free internet only market. Um, it's very, very interesting to see how that's going to progress over the next sort of five, ten years. Um, to see where the playing field is then. Very interesting. Well, George, that's been fascinating. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll uh, come back and tell us a bit more about it in due course. Of course. That was the first of our series of interviews with innovators on the cutting edge of journalism, George Berridge from the Sun Media Team.